Sir Cat, home of brilliant children's books. Meow! Hello, I'm Sarah Antonio and I'm Mark Dory's daughter. He's the one that wrote Holly's Magic Bubbles. It's a really good book. You should try it out, like, for real. My dad is a great dad and he's a great author. Thank you, Seren, for that surprise, for that surprise uh, beginning there. Well, my name's Mark Dory, and I'm the author and publisher of Tomsa Cat Books. And today, I'm going to tell you all about Polly's Magic Bubbles. But I'm not going to read from the book. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and story tell it. So I'm going to miss out bits and bobs because, well, I can't remember everything. But I want to give you a flavour of what the book is about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to story tell it. And you'll see pictures come up, which are actually, let me see, which are actually pictures in this book, which you'll actually see come up on the screen. So, right, let's start the book. So this is Polly's Magic Bubbles. I hope you enjoy. Sorry, said the man. They're all gone. All gone, said Polly. But you had three left. A blue one, a green one, and a red one. Sorry. I sold the last one a few minutes ago. You snooze, you lose. Well, Polly hadn't snoozed, so she didn't know how she could have lost anything. But lost she had. But you promised! Uh, uh, sorry, said the man. Um, why don't you come back next week and I'll see what I can do. And with that, he closed his suitcase and shuffled off. Polly stared at the £2.50 in her hand that she was going to use to buy a bubble gun. She stared around the park and there were bubbles floating everywhere. Some of those bubbles most probably from a bubble gun that rightly should have belonged to her. Excuse me, said a voice. Polly spun around and there was a strange old man in an old crinkly smelly suit. I saw you watching the bubbles. You like them, don't you? Now, Polly knew she shouldn't be talking to strangers, so she simply went, I've got some bubbles, bigger and better than any bubble gun. Oh, Polly was getting really freaked. Look, look. I really should, I really should go. Magic bubbles, said the man. And with that, he pulled out a tiny green bottle with a top that shone like the sun. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Erin. <laughs> you, you wouldn't get many bubbles in there, thought Polly. Bigger and better than any bubble gun, said the man. Um, look, uh, I, I really have to... Magic bubbles, said the man. Magic bubbles, thought Polly. Hmm, how much money do you have? Polly held out her £2.50. Hmm, I'm not sure whether that's going to be enough, but I would hate for you to be disappointed twice in one day. Um, well, well uh, I, I, I don't know, said Polly. Polly turned around to see where her parents was because now she was getting really, really worried. And when she turned back, the old man was gone. Whew. He was a bit creepy, thought Polly. Creepy, creepy, creepy. He was very creepy indeed, Sarah. He's a bit creepy, thought Polly. I'm glad he's gone. She went to put her money back into her pocket. Her money was gone. And there in her hand was a tiny green bottle with a top that shone like the sun. Wow. Polly looked at the bottle and there was a piece of paper next to it. An old yellow piece of paper. Polly unraveled the paper and there was some writing on it. Thank you for purchasing your magic bubbles. Twelve blows but not too hard. Only 12 and no more. Use your last bubbles very carefully. 
refunds definitely not available. Polly stared at the note when suddenly a gust of wind blew it out of her hand and it vanished poof, in a puff of smoke. Polly stared at the bottle. Then she unscrewed the top and she took out the dropper. The dropper was crooked like a thin sewing needle with the tiniest of eyes at the end with a hole hardly big enough to see through, let alone blow a bubble. A gust of wind came and blew the soapy liquid and the bubble got bigger and bigger and bigger. It was the biggest bubble that Polly had ever seen. It detached itself off the bubble, off the blower, and it bounced on the floor. And wherever it bounced, it picked up blades of grass and flowers and everything. Polly started running after the bubble when another gust of wind blew it up and out of reach. Eleven bubbles left, said a voice. Polly stared, but the old man was nowhere to be seen. Hmm, maybe I should blow another one for Polly. She began to unscrew the top when Polly Anna! Her mum was stomping towards her. Polly Anna, what are you doing? Um, sorry mum, I was blowing bubbles. Well, will you come and blow them where, you can, where we can see you? Now, come on, it's time to go home. And off they went home. A short while later, there was a knock on Polly's front door. A louder knock on Polly's front door. Polly rushed downstairs, opened the door, and there was her best friend, Marcia. Marcia, quick, come in. I've got something to show you. What is it? What's that? Bubbles. Bubbles? Magic bubbles. Magic bubbles! Let me sh Shh! Both girls rushed upstairs and when they were safely in Polly's bedroom, Polly unscrewed the top. But before she could do anything, Marcia was there blowing. <gasps> and the bubble got bigger and bigger and bigger. Wow, look at the size of that bubble, Paul! It's huge! The bubble bounced around the room. It bounced onto Polly's bed and there was Polly's teddy, Alfie, sitting on the bed. The bubble bounced onto Alfie and picked the bed up and Alfie started floating around the room. Look at that Paul! He's, he's got Alfie he's floating around the room! The bubble floated all around the room and when it got to the wall, it went straight through the wall. It's gone straight through the wall, Paul, look! Both girls rushed to the window and there they could see Alfie floating over. It's floating over the rooftops! <gasps> Ten bubbles left, said a voice. Marcia, did you hear that? Hear what? Uh, nothing, said Polly. Marcia looked at Polly with eyes as big as saucers. Let's blow another one. Well, well, I'm not sure there's nobody. Oh, let's blow another one. Well, there's nobody. Oh, please. Okay, said Polly. But I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna blow it. Okay, so Polly took out the blower and she began to blow and the bubble got bigger and bigger and bigger. It's bigger than before, Paul! Watch this! Marcia jumped up and was floating in the bubble. Look at me, Paul! I'm flying! Marcia, I'm not sure if this is... But I'm flying, Paul, look! Marcia floated around the bedroom and when she got to the wall, she went straight through the wall. Polly rushed through the window and there's Marcia floating and singing, Look at me everyone! I'm flying! Polly didn't know what to do. What would you do? Well, there was only one thing left to do. 
she unscrewed the top and she began to blow and the bubble got bigger and bigger and bigger. Polly screwed the top on. I haven't got a pocket to cover it in. <laughs> Put it in her pocket and jumped in the bubble. The bubble held her weight and bubble floated around the room and when she got to the wall, the bubble popped. No, it didn't. It went straight through the wall. And Polly and Marcia started floating towards their first great adventure. Dun, dun, dun! And that is, well, that is a bit of the start of Polly's Magic Bubbles. So if you want to find out what happens next, you're going to have to find the book. Is this there? It's really good. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. So our books are only available from our website, which is www.thompsacat.com. And I want to tell you something about our books. All our books are illustrated in full colour. And my wife does all the drawings and they're all done in big watercolour on A2 sheets. And then we get them into the book. So they're full and full of lovely detail, as you can see on here. And also, I don't write for boys or girls. I write adventure stories. So if you're in for an adventure story, then this, this adventure, Polly's Magic Bubbles, may be the story just for you. And all our books are actually written on premium heavyweight paper it makes the it makes the images pop out and the old books are really heavy and they're all made in the uk a lot of uh, a lot of children's books are actually made in china or indonesia or italy in every book i hide a little thompson cat so that you can have a bit of fun in one of the illustrations there's a little thompson cat so why not visit our website that's www.thompsacat.com why is our firm called Tom? Why is our publishing business called Thompson Cat Be Sarah? Because our brother's called Tom, and I'm called Sarah, and Catherine's called Cat. Catherine, but we just joined it together. Tom, Sarah, Cat. Not Tom, Sarah, Cat. I don't like being called Sir. Okay. Okay. So it's www.thompsoncat.com. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.